Hi guys, this is Julia from Just One More Card and today I have the honor of guesting for Stamping Bella, one of my favorite stamp companies ever because they have adorable images. And I want to show you a technique today that I haven't done for a while, which is copy coloring on craft using this Senorita Beverly stamp set by Stamping Bella. I just love their Senorita stamps because they're just so hilarious. Now, because I'm coloring on craft, I actually created um, a, um, a, well, I didn't create the hex chart, Sandy Alnog did, um, but I printed it on craft cardstock and colored it in. Because um, Copics react to craft cardstock a little bit differently than they do to white paper. And by that, I mean that once the Copic colors dry, they become a little bit uh, brighter on craft cardstock. So like it took me a couple of years to figure out that I should just print this on craft cardstock instead of guessing all the time. So for example, this is V05 and you can see that when I just put it down onto craft cardstock, it looks quite a bit darker than the V05 that I've colored in a few weeks ago. So this is quite a significant difference. Um, to show it to you on another example, for example here, the YR24, which is a like an dark orange, a little bit brownish uh, color. Here's how it looks like when I put it down onto the cardstock. And you can see on the other side how it looks when it dries out. So to me it was just, I don't, I can't believe I didn't have this idea sooner to just print the, the hex chart from Sandy Alnock out onto craft paper and just color it in like I did on white paper. Because that helps me so much to uh, pick the correct colors for coloring on craft because it always takes some time for these colors to dry and It makes it kind of hard to to see if your shadows are right if your highlights are right And this makes it just so much easier. So I really recommend it to you if you color on craft cardstock Which is in itself an amazing thing to do because it's so much fun and the effect is amazing so I'm using the Ranger dye ink, and the only reason I'm using this particular dye ink is um, that it's a like a little bit darker brown than the craft cardstock itself. So I can basically go for a no-line coloring here, but of course you can use a dark color as well. Now I have to be careful here to um, watch the shadows. For example, here where the top of the umbrella casts a shadow on what is underneath it, as I'm trying to demonstrate here. And this will be very important so I will have some definition and not just like one blob of color. What I like to do is I like to start out with my brightest color here and just um, sketch in where the shadow areas are going to be. If I mess up, it's not terrible It's not terrible because I used the brightest color and I can always go over it. But this helps me a lot to make sure that I have enough space for my highlights when I go in with the darker colors. And you can see even here, like, I mean, this video is sped up, so you will see the effect even more pronounced. That while I'm coloring, the previous color dries and becomes much brighter than it used to be when I put it down. You can see here, I'm tracing along the edge of that umbrella where it casts a shadow underneath here. I'm being very careful as to not color into the hand of the senorita holding the umbrella. And the rest of the coloring is basically my regular Copic coloring. So what I'm doing is I'm just extending the darker color by going over it with a lighter color and blending towards the areas that I haven't colored yet. See, I'm doing the same thing here. And then this is my brightest color. I'm just going to go over everything. And on this first pass, it's not going to look very defined, but that's okay. Because right now, all I want to do is I want to lay down the color so I can see what area I've colored in. And I already know that I have to work on my shadow areas because you can see that the top part of the umbrella and the inside of the umbrella, they are not very defined. Okay, so I'm just coming back in here and just blending another color in between just to make this a little bit the transition a little bit more natural and now I have to work on that shadow. All the colors that I'm using will be listed in the, not in the video description below, but on my blog so you can um, reference all the colors that I'm using and try this for yourself. Because I always find it super helpful to see what colors somebody else used um, so it makes it easier for me to, to do this. And I am here very carefully um, adding even darker shades now into this. I think this is even an E, like a brown color now, um, just to make sure that I have really clear definition between the top part of the umbrella and the bottom part of the umbrella. And it looks very dark right now, but again, this is going to dry, and when it dries, it's going to be significantly lighter than it is now.
so I'm not too worried about this. Also, I've tried this before I did the video, so I know what to expect. And now I'm just coming into the very shadow areas here with my mid-range darkest color and just accentuating them. And you can see here while I start working on the skin that the umbrella, um, uh, the shadow area has dried and has become much lighter, but still offers a nice contrast to the top part of the umbrella. Now for the face, I'm using my regular skin colors, the ones that I always use. And I know it looks completely hideous right now, but I, I promise you this is because the Copics um, are so wet, they appear so much darker than they are in real life. So I, it, I know like when I, when I did the coloring at first, I was like, oh my goodness, this looks hideous and like this won't work ever. But then after I had colored in her arms and hands and legs and came back to the face, um, it had dried and it didn't look bad at all anymore. And you can see already that it has dried significantly and looks so much better. So I'm going to do this for the legs here as well now. Same procedure. And then I'm going to go back to the face to add in more details. And this is just because um, some of the details uh, have been muted down when I went over it with the lightest color. So I'm just accentuating them a little bit more and then blending out. Um, I'm going to do the same thing on her arms and legs and then on her coat and I'm going to play some music for you so you can enjoy the rest of the coloring before we finish off the card. Thank you. 
Now that I'm done with the coloring, I'm grabbing a white pen and I'm tracing the outline of the image. If you have a Sharpie, that would be like a water-based Sharpie, for example, that would work very well. Um, white water-based Sharpies are really hard to come by in Germany though, so I just, you know, picked something that is similar to it and I'm tracing the outside of the image here. You absolutely do not have to do this, but I think this is just a super neat effect because it makes it kind of look like a sticker almost and it stands out even more against the white card base. So you can see here how it looks when it is finished. And here's a close-up. You can see that the colors on the face dried very, very nicely. So you have a really nice gradation of color. The umbrella looks fantastic as well. Um, the little bit of extra depth I added there helps uh, for the contrast. And here on the coat, you can see that even the darker purples blended nicely into the pinks and the pens have these nice folds. Thank you so much for watching. I have some more videos for you here to check out. If you like this video, please subscribe because I have a lot more coloring videos coming up for you. Cheers.